Hi guys, it is Kay Jones coming at you with another video. This is going to be a guide for the Hallowed Sepulcher. Sepulk? Sepulky? I don't know how to pronounce it, but I think that's besides the fact. It's more about how to do it, what we need, and things like that. So I'm going to first begin with, you know, how do I get to the location to do the Hallowed Sepulcher? Or Sepulk? Whatever. <laughs> you need your dra Draken's Medallion, which you get from the quest Sins of the Father. Um, actually, I'm not even sure if it's from that particular quest. It may be from another one. But basically, to do Sins of the Father, it's a prerequisite. So you will have this medallion. Teleport to Darkmire. And once you're at this location, you're going to follow the path of my character, which is going to be in this minigame location. Like I said, when you do the questions of the Father to have access to Dark Mire, the prerequisite requires you to have this medallion, so you will have it. Um, and then that teleport is added on after you complete the Sins of the Father quest. Um, so yeah, my character is running there right now. I'm going to go in depth about all of the things you need for the Hallowed, so hallowed Sepulcher. <laughs> um, I've been doing this to grind out Black Graceful, basically. Um, I'm 99 agility, so I do have access to all um, five floors, and I have been on all five floors. Um, I will say I do not always complete the fifth floor. It's um, a bit of a potluck thing with me and how much I'm paying attention correct and all that kind of stuff. So if we go to the Hall Hallowed Sepulchre, um, as you can see, I have all the pages um, and your, my collection log to show that I've been to each floor and I've looted them at least enough times to be able to get the page and everything like that and then that I have hit my, I guess, hallowed mark, stuff like that. And I don't have any of the equipment that makes the mini game easier. So as you get these hallowed marks, which I'll show you how you get those, you're able to buy kind of like these upgrades. Um, so, you know, you can get a Hallowed Ring, um, and that will prevent damage from traps in the Hallowed Sepulchre, things like that. So these things will kind of help the minigame be a little bit more um, chill. Um, you're going to fail less obstacles and things like that. To be honest, I have already two pieces of this die, and they cost 300 uh, hallowed marks each and I haven't bought any of the upgrades and I've been doing just fine I've been able to get to floor level five each time So it's not necessary and when you're starting out you won't have that so it, it's definitely not needed um, However, if you're wanting to complete your collection log and you're wanting the smoothest time you can you can go for those upgrades for sure so um, I'm gonna go ahead and get into some rune light information before we start saying what you need and what to expect um, I imported some coding and I copied and pasted it and imported the tile markers into Runelight and that was really helpful. And so what you're basically going to do here is, um, as you can see in my screen on the side, we have a Runelight and you can do tile indicators. So if you go to this wrench and you type tile, you're going to see tile indicators and you can turn that on. That's extremely helpful. And also while you're here, make sure you turn on ground markers. This is extremely helpful. And in the description below, there's going to be a website and you can copy that code. And then you can go ahead and once you have that copied, you can import ground markers here. So anything that's copied on your clipboard, on your computer, and you hit import, it will import into the game. Now, I wouldn't solely rely on these markers, honestly, um, especially when you're learning. Uh, they can actually throw you off. I highly recommend going with your gut rather than following the, the strictly following the markers, um, if that makes sense. That, that's just a personal thing that I recommend after um, learning the Hallowed Sepulchre. So, um, but that, that's also up to your discretion. So now let's get into what you need and everything like that. Um, my recommendation is to have the best teak planks, I mean, the best planks and nails, but I'm an iron. I ain't going to make out of my ruin bars, ruin night nails. It's just not going to happen. So I made admin and I'm using teak planks. It just helps your fail rate. To be honest, there's not a lot of bridge building in this though. So I wouldn't bring better, but that's up to you. Um, another thing, so you'll need some nails, 
some some planks uh, the higher the better the less fail rate a saw hammer uh, a lock pick is highly recommended it helps with the fail rate of the chest this is a strange old lock pick box um, and then you're gonna need some vampire dust if you're an Iron Man um, there are some vampires outside Berg de Rot. if you use your Mortania elite legs if you have those basically you can go to Berg de Rot and on the way to the haunted mine if you've done the haunted mine quest there are some vampires and you can just kill them and bank them in Berg de Rot. Um, that's what I did for my vampiric dust to kind of stack it up. You don't need that many guys. Um, I farmed 200 just to kind of be done with it. Uh, so this is a good starting out inventory when you're learning. Uh, you're going to need more food than anything probably because you're going to be failing a lot. It's actually difficult to learn this in my opinion. So I've been playing this game since I was like nine years old and all of these videos you see these professionals with like the max gear, black graceful, and they just fly through it. It's because they have so much practice. The more you practice something, the better you get at it. So it's going to be really tough in the beginning to get hallowed marks because you're going to just fail and fail and fail and not make time which is really difficult, but as you keep practicing and you have patience, maybe have a friend look over your shoulder and help you, that, that's, that's the whole point of this is that practice and then you're gonna start getting hallowed marks really quickly. Now I wanna take note that you need at least a 52 agility to do this. Um, so even if you've done Sins of the Father, if you don't have 52 agility, you can't do this. And the 92 agility would be for floor five. Um, a lot of the guides don't show the fifth floor, which is understandable because it's ridiculously difficult. So, let's get into this. What else do you need? Um, you're going to need the highest magic uh, enchant jewelry because you'll have the least fail rate on it, basically. The highest would be Zenite, but 20 souls and 20 bloods is very expensive. So I just took that down a notch for Onyx. It's been working fine for me. The fail rate has been little to none so use your highest level enchantment jewelry enchantment you can you're like where am i going to use that i will show you don't worry um and then something i also recommend is a stamina you shouldn't need it and i'll i'll show you why but just in case and then also uh, from great brain robbery you can get this prayer book when you recite the prayer, it removes poison. If you don't have this, not a big deal. Just bring an anti-poison. Um, and yeah, have a spot for some hallowed marks and everything like that. Um, I'm going to be talking while doing this and explaining things so you won't see me finishing the floors on time because I'm going to be trying to explain things to you. And once things are slowed down and explained, you'll see me going faster. Um, yeah, so what you're going to need on your character is a mithril grapple. A lot of people have the Dorgashan crossbow because it is lightweight. Uh, pff, I just brought a rune crossbow. It's been working fine for me. But if you're concerned about the weight on your character and you're running out of energy or run a lot, then that's something that you can bring as a Dorgashan crossbow because it's lighter. And then a holy symbol. And you need a holy symbol to recharge your run energy at the end of each floor. So that's really important. And then just bring graceful. If you don't have graceful, bring boots of lightness or spotted cape. Anything that reduces your character's weight. So I think I've gone over everything. Um, and now I'm going to kind of go slowly over the obstacles and everything that you will, in, you know, kind of go through in this mini game. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and run in to start the mini game. You're going to have a dialogue that says it's not a safe death. No, it's not. And if you die, you can collect your items from the mysterious stranger and it's going to cost money, but you can get it from there. So anyway, start the first floor. And um, the basic obstacles that you are going to be seeing on the first floor is going to ensue throughout all the floors. It's just going to get more difficult. Now, you can time fires um, pretty well with practice and with correct... Um, tick counts but first floor is pretty easy dodge the fire there's some ground markers that should assist you if you imported them um, and then the sword dodge the sword at the correct timing that's going to take some practice especially at the higher levels um, we're going to have some more fire so we're going to come over here and just you know take it easy um, 
with the fire and just take it one by one. As you get better and better, you'll get better at timing and get a little bit more efficient and be able to skip a bunch of flames, but that comes with practice. We're gonna go downstairs and we're coming to the end of the first floor. Um, something I recommend is really zooming out. It helps you see everything, especially at the higher floors. We're gonna mithril grapple over here and we're gonna start getting some loot. This is where the lock pick is really helpful. This is where you're seeing the myth grapple being um, kind of used on this first floor. Now, the floors, you can get to, oh, I just failed it. So if you upgrade the myth grapple that you can get from the mini game, it will reduce your fail rate to basically, you'll never fail it. Oh, wow, usually that's never an issue. I cannot believe this. Um, I usually don't fail, especially on the first floor. That's extremely interesting. But, you know, you should have enough time. It's a good example of why those upgrades are nice. Um, when you jump over this platform, you're going to see at the top left corner that the time is paused. Once you go over this and you see these magical obelisks, the whole game has been timed and you're good to kind of chill and take a little break. Um, you can activate these obelisks, which require that holy symbol, and it will recharge your run energy. Um, and then if you completed the floor within enough time, you can go downstairs. So, um, yeah, we're just going to continue at this point. Let's go. Uh, floor two. Things are going to get a little bit harder, obviously, at this point. Um, so, um, I'm pretty sure I can make this. If I can't, it's a good example of how your timing is really important. Here's another grapple with the chest, of course, here. Uh, so, I'm going to go ahead and loot that. Now, when you start getting really kind of efficient at this mini game, it's not recommended to do the first room. Okay, that's a rune to hand. I'm gonna pick that up, loot's good. Um, but yeah, the first room is not really recommended if you're going for just hallowed marks because it only gives you one where these floors have a random chance from giving you like two to three on this floor, then three to five and five to eight, whatever, it just keeps going up. These portals in particular, um, the blue will teleport you forward and the yellow will teleport you back if they're shining. If they're shining and they have like a little animation that doesn't seem very important now like you just saw me run over them but in later tiers it's really important because teleporting forward is going to be very important especially on floor five but at this floor and the third and fourth it's not really needed at the fifth floor those teleportations forward are crucial so here we are coming to the end of the second floor Go ahead and activate the obelisk. As you, as you can see at this point, we just use a mithril grapple and everything like that. Um, we're going to the third floor, which gets a lot more trickier. It's like night and day compared to the first and second floor. Um, this is the first time that you're seeing these um, minions, so to speak. Um, I'm going to kind of slow down here and show you all this. So, as you can see the animation here, you can kind of see the statues sort of move. And when they're moving like this, um, you know they're about to shoot. So that's how you know. Now, what's very important with this is we're gonna, is that you need to click to move your character as close as possible to your character. Because if you click to move far away from your character, there's gonna be a delay. And that may not seem like a big deal here, it is going to be later. So see how my character moves right away if I click right next to it versus if I click far away, there's a bit of a delay. That That's a big deal. So try to click and transition as close to your character as possible. That's going to be a really big deal when it comes down to later floors. Now, I'll be honest, I don't really complete the fifth floor because I always run out of time, but I often make it to the fifth floor. Now, in this case, I'm going to run out of time because I've been sitting here explaining to y'all. This is another mythical grapple. I just failed it. That's wonderful. Um, but um, as you can see, the vampiric dust, you're like, when am I going to use that? Basically, it's an obstacle that's going to be getting you to the chest. Um, we're going to wait. And if you time the fire really well, you can actually run all the way through on some obstacles. It's just about your timing and practice. It's not necessarily easy to do that in the beginning. This is pretty easy. Um, your goal is to teleport forward to make faster time, um, but that's kind of hard to do. 
Here's another one where it's very important to click close to your character as possible to transition to dodge these. Seems easy, it's not. It takes a lot of practice. Okay, here is going to be the next obstacle here where we have a portal flame. This is where you conjure it using your enchant jewelry. You're going to go across and you can loot the chest. You cannot loot the chest if you have not done the floor in a, a good amount of time. Okay, so um, I only have about a minute left. We're almost to the end of the floor. I kind of spent a lot of time talking. This last obstacle is extremely hard. Um, I'm going to do a clip of it slowed down so you can see what to do here. Um, but right now I'm just going to go a little faster and try to get through because I'm running out of time. Um, okay, I got through. That particular obstacle is very difficult. I'm going to take a little clip. Allow, I'm going to slow it down so y'all can check out that right now. Um, that's kind of a more difficult, that was a pain for me to learn, but you need to learn that so you can get past the third floor. Okay, so I hope that close-up helped. It's a very difficult one. I don't know, I had trouble with it. We're going on to the fourth floor. You have to really pay attention to what you're doing here and go fast because there's a lot more obstacles. They're a lot harder. You're more often to mess up. And um, basically this floor is great because you start getting a lot of hallowed, um, marks and I just messed up here. It's very hard to talk and chew gum at the same time apparently. But um, wow, I just did it again. That's great. But it's it's very easy to start getting lots of marks if you can do it in time. Uh, I'm not sure if I can at this time because I've already messed up twice. But hey, it's possible. You're gonna start seeing some new obstacles where these like um, will stun you, as you can see right here. Try running through the middle if you can. Um, you're going to start seeing some more swooshes with the fire, things like that. There's going to be a lot more upgrades um, to the hallowed sepulcher. Um, yeah, a lot of this stuff is practice at this point. If I were to slow down and show every single obstacle, it would take forever, this video. But it is kind of nice that y'all can see, you know, um, how to do the basics here. A lot of this is just practice, guys. And when you can start getting to the fourth level and start continuously getting to this point, whoa, whoa um, then you're going to start getting hallowed marks a lot quicker, which is nice. Here's a bridge. Um, this is why better strong teeth plates are really good. Each floor has two different kind of pathways. So sometimes you can get this portal frame like that guy just went through. And sometimes that is... Um, that's your obstacle. So there, you can always get two different paths per floor. Now I only have 46 seconds left. That's why it's very important that when you, you do these um, obstacles, you're kind of on it and fast. I don't even know if I'll make this one. Um, there's that teleport forward. Um, so as you can see, they just get more and more difficult. And obviously the people who have had a lot of practice are going to make it look really easy, but you're going to fail a lot in the beginning. Um, I'm going to try to go ahead and go through this obstacle right here. Whoop. See how I'm clicking really close to my character instances like this? It's a really big deal that you pay attention to that. All right, I'm going to run forward. I have six seconds left. I wasn't able to complete the floor, even though the ending is right here. Um, I failed. See those, those fails? Um, the couple times that I did fail was a really big deal and it slowed me down because it starts getting really ramped up and here's the end of this floor. Um, I hope this helps. I'm not going to show the fifth floor because most people doing this don't have 92 agility and also it's really difficult. Um, obviously I've been able to loot and get on the fifth floor many times but it's, it's just difficult and um, at that point it's practice. And I hope this guide helped you and assisted you. We didn't have a situation with vampiric dust, but basically it looks like this picture below. It's just you click on these altars, brazers, and put the vampiric dust in it. And then, well, you're good to go. You can go through the passage. Um, but yeah, I hope this helps and everything like that. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe and thumbs up if you liked the video. Thanks, guys.